came across a video online where people are going in on the comments. In the video post, a popular life coach talks about how common it is for women to pick up on signals when their man is cheating. Okay. But they seldom notice when he's just plain unhappy in the yeah. relationship. She says it's about time, you know, to think about making your man feel good instead of worrying about looking good. Ooh. And vice versa. And also making sure your woman is feeling good and that she's happy in the relationship. Same, because that definitely can affect a man's ego for sure. What do you think about these words of wisdom? Well, I think people mix it up because when they heard her talk about it, they were like, they thought she meant when a man is cheating because he's unhappy. And she was saying, no, 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 no. You always look for, oh, is he cheating? But you're yes. not you're, you're not looking to see if he's just genuinely... Just checking in. Right. Yes. Yeah. And I that was it. the difference. So yes. I understood that. And I'm like, I'm with you, Jeannie. Okay. But do it with me, too. Yes. Right. You know two-way street, saying? baby. Yeah, it's like, it's a two-way street. But it's like, yeah, I mean, I think you should check in with people because people, sometimes, especially when you're busy, you start living your life and, you know, and y'all can grow apart. Yeah. And, but see, it depends on who you're part. James will let me know. See, that's what I was going to say. For <laughs> each of you individually, how, what are your signs you check in to know that your, your spouse or your partner or your soon-to-be, whatever, maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. is happy? For you, how do you know James is happy? He'll tell me. <laughs> I don't have to worry about him. What do you mean? You know, he just tell me. He's, you know, he, he will come and he will talk, and I'm like, and I just have to sit there and listen, and he'll let me know his feelings. He'll process it, everything. Communicate it. Plus, he, what I like about him is that he knows that he's a work in progress, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of men, some of them. We always talk about therapy. A lot of them don't want to go see no, therapists. No. And it's like, I'm sorry, you might be his woman, but you're not his therapist. And there's certain things I can't answer. Mm -hmm. So you need to go to a professional. Mm -hmm. So I tell people, I'm like, if your dude is going through something, it's nice that you his woman, and sex ain't going to cure everything, honey. Right. It's some stuff up here that yeah. he got to work on, and he needs professional help. And that don't mean that he crazy. It's not, you know, we got to stop st stigmatizing it. Yeah. Help him to help himself yeah. and help him to get some help. Yeah. Yeah, I think when you feel disconnected is when you should know something's wrong. But you because not all men want to, you know, have their emotions out. They mm -hmm. want to talk about things. I think if you feel disconnected, then there's a disconnect. Yeah. And then that's when I think you should check in and say, babe, is everything okay? Is there anything we can yeah. do? Yeah. Um, what do you do? I think the key is to actually create a safe place for them because I think so many of us say that we want to hear these things and then if they are unhappy and they tell us why we're unhappy, we become defensive mm. and it becomes a problem. And it's, I don't do that. What do you mean? Well, babe, I would like more sex, more frequent. Like we just, and I don't, and that's just honest. And that yeah. goes both ways. I think that a man can ask us, what's wrong? Are you happy? And maybe you're like, I'd like more foreplay. I mean, we're talking right. about things outside of sex though. Yeah. It could be so much deeper than sure. that. I don't feel you're emotionally available to me, whatever the case is. Or when I come home from work, the house isn't clean. And that bothers me because I, whatever it is, mm -hmm. You have to be prepared if you're asking these questions to really listen and change. Yeah. And so for Iz and I, it's really been um, that. When we first got married, we would do like weekly baths together. I know that sounds super cheesy, but we'd get in the bath yeah. and we'd like kind of say, what can I have done that was better? And I need you to give me mm. something. Because Iz has a real problem of being like, I'm fine, everything's fine, right, and writing right, right. IOUs and being like, it'll get better. No, I wanted this to be different in our marriage mm -hmm. and to specifically be like, yeah. tell me how I can, no, you do everything great, lies. Ha. Tell me something, something I can, can always be yeah, improved. I like that. And, and I, I like think it's that. important to be able to receive that critique yes. and change. Yeah, it'd be okay. Yeah. Yes. Gina. I also think there's a big sign if couples don't sleep together. And I don't mean just sex. I think that there's a sacredness in certain things that you do that you just have to do as a human, like eat and sleep. If you sleep, there should be some energy connected so that you're le at least resting and healing together in that process because sleep is very restorative. Yep. And that moment, like when you wake up, everything that you apply to yourself, your workouts, your skincare, all that really restores in that night. So does your soul and your spirit. So if you're not sleeping, like even holding hands, even your toes are touching, I don't right. care. There's gotta be some <laughs> Something. connection. If a, if a couple goes to bed, every couple that I know that has divorced or, or have struggled, they slept apart in the bed the last few years or months leading yeah. up to it. And that's a big tell tell sign. I also think eating together. If you don't eat together, I know that you're yeah. rushed. Kids, different soccer schedules, work, but find ways to actually like commune yeah. together, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm saying this for the most extreme couples that don't have, that have crazy 
schedules together. I even sometimes FaceTime my husband and we're just eating. Like, you get your meal at this time, I'll get mine three hours later. Okay, we sit down and we're eating together. There's Good. just something in that break. It's bread. communication. Like that. Yeah, that's the I key. And that. you can communicate yeah. in so many different ways. Body language, all of that. Yeah. I, I also think it might be specifically to what this woman is saying. It might be human nature as children, you could have had a toy forever and you could have been neglecting that toy, looking at it, like pushing it to the side. Let another kid come over and want to play oh, with that toy. Okay. What happens? You want yeah. it. Now you're suddenly like, you ain't gonna touch my toy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We have to pay attention to those things, you know? Yeah, don't let your yeah. spouse become that old, dusty toy. Don't let it happen. <laughs>